Today, I want to investigate a few mid-cap stocks which just reported earnings for the previous quarter. We'll be looking into Square, Beyond, and Peloton. Timestamps are in the description if you wish to skip around. And I'll just be taking a look at the financials as well as notable news from the report and comment on how each stock has been performing in the wake of macro weakness this Q1. Let's go. Starting with Square, Square reported first quarter earnings and revenue well above analyst expectations. Square has very good quality management and a very high customer satisfaction rate. It's clear that Cash App will continue to drive significant cash flow as fintech companies only proceed to get stronger moving forward. Square, as you can see from the stock chart here, has been punished from a rotation out of tech and growth stocks. But then again, that short-term focus says nothing about this company as a long-term play with huge potential in its crypto holdings and offerings, among many other verticals like peer-to-peer -peer payments and building out a full-on, all-encompassing investing ecosystem. So let's have a look at hypercharts for Square. You'll see gross payment volume came in at an all-time record of $33 billion, revenue amazing growth driven by Bitcoin revenue of $3.5 billion for a total of just over $5 billion. Another record for gross profit profit of nearly $1 billion and operating income of $68 million. Gross margin has been declining, however, down to 19% and operating expenses an all-time high of $873.9 million. Growth accelerating with year-over-year -year growth driven by that Bitcoin one-time explosion as we saw, perhaps not one time, but at least one time on this chart for a total of 266% year-over-year growth, whereas operating expenditures only grew 42.5% year over year. So there is Square, a very strong quarter for the company. And here's a quick clip from CNBC discussing the quarter, having had an exclusive interview. A huge beat for Square in the quarter. That was thanks in large part to Bitcoin. Let's start with adjusted EPS, though. That was a beat by 25 cents. The monster revenue number, though, $5 billion, was mostly from crypto trading. Bitcoin revenue added $3.5 billion to Square's top line. That number, though, is a little bit misleading, guys. The more important one to watch for Square is gross profit for Bitcoin. That was $75 million in the quarter. So to put it in context, it was about 2% of that total Bitcoin revenue number. I did speak to CFO Amrita Ahuja right after the numbers came out. She explained that revenue for Bitcoin is essentially the volume of transactions done through Square. She did say gross profits, a little bit more helpful for uh, judging the growth there. That also was up 11x year over year. Apparently, though, that is how the SEC asks them to report crypto revenue. Some other highlights from the call that's underway right now, though. CEO Jack Dorsey talking about crypto driving a lot more engagement on Cash App. Cash App now makes up about half of Square's revenue. The seller business, the other half, is also showing some signs of recovery. But guys, a third ecosystem is being talked about on the call right now. Dorsey mentioning the title acquisition. That, of course, is Jay-Z's music streaming service. And Jay-Z also joined the Square board. That deal closed in the quarter. Dorsey's getting a ton of questions about how music streaming fits into the broader picture for Square. Huge bull market for Bitcoin, a lot of trading going on. So therefore, the number for trading revenue for, uh, for Square was much higher than people expected, 3.5 billion out of 5 billion total. But that gross profit number in the context of the whole Bitcoin trading ecosystem was tiny. So Square yeah. even said, guys, really focus on gross profit here. That revenue number is a little bit misleading, but revenue beat by essentially $2 billion. So analysts were way off. Now for Beyond Meat. Beyond Meat reported first quarter earnings that missed estimates as pandemic restrictions and hesitant customers continued to weigh on its restaurant business. However, Beyond Meat did say that it began to see a, quote, slow thaw in its business in the U.S. and in some areas abroad. Additionally, it issued a second quarter sales forecast that came in above estimates. This report from the company came as attempts to continue its expansion in restaurants and grocery stores, but has 
has been battling increasing competition. Yet, in my opinion, Beyond Meat is one of few that I think will define the high end of the market when it comes to plant-based meats. And the stock has been killed recently, as you'll see, losing all momentum, as you'll see by this very troubling chart. Any lower and the stock will drop below $100, pretty much. So let's have a look at hypercharts for Beyond. What has led the stock to sell off so much? Well, you will see that restaurants and retail did actually lead to an increase quarter over quarter, so not too troubling there. But if we continue on, you'll see operating income loss of $24.65 million, not very good. That's a little troubling. Net income, negative $27.26 million. Gross margin at 30%, staying pretty stable, increasing quarter over quarter. But here's the problem we start to get into, increasing operating expenses, 57 7.35 million dollars while we have growth dropping off a cliff as you can see from the chart right here we have operating expenses coming in at 59 almost 60 percent year over year whereas revenue is only growing 11.42 percent year over year so the operating expenses are growing at a much faster clip than the actual revenue so beyond meat it'll be interesting to see what happens to the stock the stock has been struggling so much recently and i wouldn't be surprised if it does test the key psychological level of $100 per share, which would be tracing it back to actually pretty much a year ago in 2020 in early May. We'll see if it does reach that point, but again, six month chart looking very troubling for the stock. We'll have to see if they're able to regain some strength in the second half of the year. And finally for Peloton, Peloton easily topped analyst estimates for the quarter, but cut its guidance after announcing a volume voluntary recall of all treadmills. The stock is bouncing back a little after the shock of such a disastrous recall. This is another stock that has been struggling very much. It's a growth play. It's also a stay at home play, although I see it as much more than that. And you'll see the stock is down 50% from all time highs. In my opinion, this is a very tempting purchase under $100 per share, looking out five to 10 years. So let's have a look at hyper charts and dive into the financials a little bit for Peloton. Revenue at a record $1.26 billion, gross profit at a strong $445 million, but they did print a loss of negative $13.7 million, with margins decreasing down to 35.24%, gross margin and a negative 0.69% profit margin. Expenses increased to $459 million, but growth revenue especially stayed strong year over year at a 141%, with operating expenses expenditures only up 50.79%. So a strong quarter for Peloton. And here's a clip of what Jim Cramer had to say on the quarter. Peloton had a, you know, I've got to hand it to Foley. I think, I think he's a very bright guy. They, they had some remarkable numbers. People will swear by this. It was a winner during the pandemic and it's staying winner. And I know what happened with the treadmill is, uh, is bad. And I love the fact he started his letter by saying, look, I screwed up. I, I apologize. Yep. He didn't say, well, um, he didn't make it someone else apologize or we made a mistake or mistakes were made. He owned it. But uh, connected fitness workouts up 239 percent. Total revenue growth up 141 percent. Carl, this is a magnificent yep. quarter. So I hope this roundup was helpful in investigating Square, Beyond, and Peloton. How do you think these businesses did? For me at least, I think Square, Beyond Meat, and Peloton are all very close, if not already in the buy zone. For me personally, looking out 10 years just to hold on to these companies, common stock, no options, no nothing. Square is probably the most overpriced of the three, but I also believe it is the strongest. Beyond is really struggling and Peloton will be hit on the way out with the fears of it being nothing more than a stay-at-home stock but i think all three of these are incredibly valuable mid-cap stocks and i think they will be big winners over the long run until next time